Salutations from space and aloha from Earth, friends. Gemini Brett here at this wonderful time, coming into a total solar eclipse in the sign of Aries, where Mercury is currently retrograde. So Mercury retrograde, y'all. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that demanded glasses. I was actually just reflecting as I put this shirt on that this was the shirt I was wearing when I met my beloved Scorpiana many years ago on the island of Maui. Um, and we're heading back there. It's good to like head back to things, head back to places when Mercury is retrograde. I know they say you just shouldn't travel at all and that you should kind of like hide in a cave. No, Mercury's hiding in the cave. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that Mercury is far away. So I want to talk a little bit today about Mercury retrograde play and about the coming total solar eclipse. Wondering how that aligns for you, how it will align for me. I'm really excited also to um, share about um, a ship that I have just launched. Um, and there are many aboard already, which feels great. And it's the Constellations Earth Astrology Community. So I'll get into that a little bit along the way too. But for now, let's just say, hey, I'd love to know for those of you who are here live in the many places, um, the places three, where you're beaming in from. Um, so if you feel like playing along, maybe hit me up in the chat. Say hello. Tell me the land from which you currently hail. Um, oh, Nadine, what's up? Greetings. Nadine tuning in from Baja, California. Um, in Mexico, I really have been needing a haircut for a long time, but this thing is trippy. <laughs> Try to tame that monster. Mystical Rainbow Casey, what's up? What a fun name. Um, south node and midheaven conjunct in Pisces. So the south node is at your Pisces midheaven. Um, ninth and Aries stelliums, moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars. Cool. I'm calling in from Detroit. What's up, Motor City? That's like a Mercury city, right? <laughs> so be interesting to look at kind of history of Ford and um, Detroit in the lens of uh, Mercury timings and cycles. Some great mercurial being called Eminem from that place, as we know, to be an interesting thing to investigate. Um, St. Louis, Missouri in the house. What's up? I was there for four hours recently on the way back from D.C. at a four hour layover. I was like, I'm going to go check out that gateway arch and get some barbecue. And so I did. Uh, Stockton, California in the house. from not so far away from our, I currently sit in California's Bay Area, Portland, Oregon, Quebec. Right on. Italy. Whoa, we are global, y'all. Santa Cruz, more Michigan. Right on. Arizona. Um, and, oh, Nadine, right on. I'm hearing that you have confirmed three baby herons. I was sharing in this Sunday's kind of pop-up teaching about the Earth astrology of Easter and the sun on the cross, about how my equinox teacher was a great blue heron that I found at a park um, where I was pursuing the mysteries and um, Nadine was there. And then she shared these amazing images of um, herons right there at her spot. Well, look, tuning into another spot. I see more Michigan. Awesome. I see Mexico. Alfredo, nice to hear your name, brother. It's good to see you here. Um, Yo, let's connect. I, want, I have a little offer for you about constellations. There's one more place I'd love to find, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm in too many places at once. Okay, Mercury retrograde. And Mercury having stationed retrograde on April Fool's Day. Hilarious, right? And as we know, Mercury is apparently moving backwards through the signs of Earth's zodiac about three times a year and for about three weeks at a time. And this, by the way, is one of Hermes thrice great Mercury's signs, Mercury's mudra, 
right? So you just get three all over the place. The idea is that this is Mercury's finger and you connect it to the thumb, but three remain, you know? Three of these Mercury cycles a year. Amazingly, there's actually pi Mercury cycles a year. There's 22 Mercury cycles in seven years, right? 22 sevenths, one of the fractions that is used to estimate pi. You can't find pi with a fraction. It is irrational. You can't use a ratio to describe pi, right? A, a better term is it's a transcendental number like this weird part of my head that's trying to go retrograde. Um, <clears throat> And um, I think it's pretty much a wonderful indication of just how magical Mercury is to know that Mercury has pi synodic cycles with the sun and Earth's sky every year. What a trip. Um, let's play with Mercury a little bit. 88. You know, there's 88 keys in the grand piano. These days, astronomers teach that there are 88 constellations in our sky. That's kind of a new trip, by the way, that was laid down in 1929. I was ranting about that a few weeks ago in my no on Prop 13 <laughs> transmission. Um, so let's just not go back there right now. But it's something that you typically hear astronomers, and actually most astrologers teach these days, that there are 88 constellations most, it seems, don't even know that that's kind of new, but that's okay. So 88 Earth days for Mercury to orbit the sun. Now, first of all, anytime you say anything Mercury, you better know that we're talking about on average because the trickster, the eccentric one, has a ridiculously eccentric or elliptical orbit. And Mercury just never does anything the same twice. <laughs> it's like way too inventive and wild for that, right? Which is one of the many things that I love so much about Mercury, about Hermes. Um, but it is on average 88 Earth days for Mercury to circle the sun. No, to ellipse about the sun. So this is called Mercury's sidereal orbit or sidereal cycle, like Mercury's journey about that star of ours. 88 days, 88 Earth days. Here is an amazing truth about Mercury. Mercury's orbit about the sun, right? Think about Earth, right? How many times does Earth spin in our annual orbit about the light? And as you know, the answer is 365. 365 days in a year. Okay, wait, no, 365.25. Oh, no, 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 that's so Julian. We needed that Gregorian reform <laughs> once we return to the truth that there's more like 365.2422 days in a tropical year, Earth's orbit about the light, yes? So we're just spinning and spinning and spinning as we cruise around and it's just day and night and day and night, right? Like 365 plus of those in each of our orbits in each of our years. For Mercury, though it might take 88 Earth days for Mercury to get around the sun, right? Much shorter than an Earth year. Why? Because Mercury is much closer, right? The inside of the track is shorter. The sun's at the center of this solar system track, right? And a chariot called Mercury is therefore the planet that moves fastest about the sun. All right, we're all, we're all there. Um, please feel free to chime in if you have any questions or something that you'd like to add to this mix. I'm going to do my best to check in with the comments along the way, okay? Right, so while it is 88 Earth days for an average Mercury trip about the sun it is only half a mercury day <laughs> it's like so wild let's hear uh, and i don't know how this is going to come through in the mic but let's hear two over one pretty easy polyrhythm right this one's doing two this one's doing one by the way if i sped this up incredibly fast the two against one, you would hear a musical octave, 
like somewhere that octave right that's like a relationship of two tones whose frequencies have a two to one ratio all right and for mercury there is a two to one ratio in years per day <laughs> okay like literally on mercury two solar years go by for each day so like what let's try to like put ourselves there um if you were on mercury and you decided that your day should begin at sunrise which just seems to make more sense than beginning a day in the middle of the night um so you begin a day at sunrise okay and let's just say that that particular sunrise is the beginning of your year okay well the year is complete by the time the sun sets that day <laughs> like what it's just the weirdest thing mercury is spinning so slowly with respect to the sun that mercury only spins half of a spin half of a rotation with respect to the sun during the course of one orbit earth 365 spins in a bit right for mercury like half of a spin so the real not brody here says so, so everyone every day you get two birthdays yeah what a trip how would that work it'd be interesting to kind of sort out what the um solar return thing would be like on mercury <laughs> i think that's maybe one option you can see that it just kind of like fried my mind considering what it would be like i'll tell you like the zodiac of mercury must be so weird because the zodiac also has so much to do with the interface of day and year right the equator which is the plane of our day and the ecliptic which is the plane of our year or orbit about this thing which is the sun <laughs> okay and I mean, maybe it has something therefore also to do with like the rates of day and year, the frequency, the periodicity, maybe not. But while Earth has this like 23 and a half degree-ish tilt between the planes of day and year, Mercury's like not really tilted at all. So the equator for Mercury, the spin axis, and the ecliptic for Mercury, the orbital axis, they're pretty much the same. Mercury has very low um, obliquity, it's called. But very high eccentricity, which is the elliptical nature of Mercury's orbit. So like the zodiac are ready just from the truth that the equator and ecliptic are almost the same plane for Mercury. Like the zodiac would be weird. And then you have this super strange rate where there's two years each day. <laughs> right? So you get this polyrhythm, two against one, the octave. What a trip, right? And check this out. You know, this I'm doing a talk at um, the wonderful Norwak Astrology Conference in May which is, by the way, at the end of May in Seattle. So I'm excited to, speaking of retrograde, like head back to the land where I lived for most years of my life. Well, sorry, most consecutive years of my life. I lived in Seattle for 17 years. Um, and I believe the in-person attendance for Norwalk is sold out, but it's also totally available online. So wherever you are in the world, you can tune in. There's going to be a bunches of amazing talks. Uh, let me find their website, Norwak, N-O-R-W-A-C dot net. I'll put that here into the comments in case folks want to check out Norwak, my favorite astrology conference. Um, where do I do that? I guess, to, yeah, that nice, that posts kind of universally. Thank you, StreamYard. I'm actually doing three lectures or a pre-conference workshop on um, introduction to harmonics and like when and where you can use harmonics in your astrology, regardless of which paradigm you practice. And by the way, harmonics, <laughs> right? polyrhythms. Um, and we'll be doing things like this and 
I'll get back to that one. Uh, I like how this Egyptian ring sounds like. <laughs> sounds like jingle bells, kind of. Um, yeah, so I'm doing a harmonics um, pre-conference workshop, and I'm giving two talks during NORWAC. One is on sacred geometry for astrologers 101. Um, and yeah, there's a little riddle in that title. Um, and the other one is a talk I've been wanting to do for a long time. And it's like how we keep finding things in astronomy, like modern astronomical insights um, that just seem to confirm <laughs> what astrology has always known. Uh, and also like expands the astrological palette as well. Right, like you know, the telescope discovers Uranus and then Neptune and Pluto. Before uh, Neptune, by the way, uh, Ceres and Vesta and Pallas and Juno asteroids. I think in that order. I can't remember exactly. Vesta sometimes visible with the naked eye, as is Uranus. I've been initiated. I saw both of them in space with my face on the same night from the wonderful place called Joshua Tree. Anyway, one of the things that we kind of confirm, I believe, and what is taught about Mercury by astrology when we look through the lenses, the telescopes, and the probes of astronomy is that Mercury is just so Gemini. <laughs> Why do I say that? Because due to Mercury spinning so slowly, so slowly, in fact, that there's two years for every Mercury day, this arranges a situation where half of Mercury is just flaming hot because it's just facing the sun. I mean, imagine if it was always daytime, if the earth wasn't spinning, right? And we never had night, like it would be hot, hot, hot. Remember, imagine if it was always nighttime. And basically Mercury is situated in such a way due to this very slow rotational rate relative to the rate of orbit that half of Mercury is just solar hot and the other half is freezing cold. These like long days and these long nights. So I'm told, and I don't know, I'd have to go, but that there's craters on like the night side of Mercury that are literally colder than Saturn. And that is wild, right? Because Saturn is so, so far away. What a trip. But then on the other side of Mercury, like on the day side, it would be really, really, really hot, right? Closest planet to the light. And that, like when I envision this, there's the kind of, I said, so Mercury as well, right? So we get so Gemini in that half of Mercury is just burning hot and half is freezing cold. Um, it's so mercurial to consider how we therefore could survive on Mercury. I mean, I think the answer would only be like underground. Mercury doesn't really have an atmosphere either. So, but, you know, if you went there with like some kind of super duper space suit or you could just breathe ether, <laughs> whatever it would take, and you were in a suit like this, where you couldn't take extreme hot or extreme cold, you'd have to kind of live at that Terminator line. There's actually two of them, right? Where the, where the shadow meets the light, like the night and the day. And you would just have to kind of be consistently nomadic, right? <laughs> like you wanna be either like right where it's always sunrise or right where it's always sunset. And you could probably, therefore, have you ever had this experience where you like watch a sunset and then you like race up the hill behind you and you see it set again? You kind of have to do that, right? You could kind of move around and like have the sun set and the sunrise. And you know what? I, I, I don't quite comprehend it yet, but, I, but I've read that on Mercury because of this, 
because the days are twice as long as the solar years that um, the sun will retrograde on Mercury. And yeah, I'm, I'm like, kind of don't quite get how that is. Venus, by the way, also has a situation where her rotational rate is extremely slow. Like that the day is longer than the year. But because Venus does have an atmosphere in so much atmosphere, like so much like greenhouse gas, like that kind of differential of day and night, from what I understand, is, is more distributed across the body, the beautiful body of that Venusian planet. Um, anyway, trippy. I'm writing Nadine wrote here, the planet is 4,000, 4, k degrees on its sun side and only 2k degrees on the dark side what's k kelvins thousands four thousand degrees i think that would be extreme um so i'm wondering what those k's are maybe right with less code please some codes I just cannot crack. Winter writes here, the other day I looked up the etymology of each of the 12 disciples' names and was about to match them to the 12 astrological signs. Blew my mind how much they aligned. Well, there's a little retrograde back to my Sunday pop-up class, which, by the way, you can find on my YouTube page um, on the Sacred Earth Astronomy of East Ur. Um, yeah, and many have done this also like looking for how the 12 tribes of Israel relate to the 12 astrological signs. The kind of low-hanging fruit for um, the disciples, the 12 disciples in the signs is Thomas. And sadly, Thomas is not always related to Gemini, though it very much should be, I feel, because Thomas means twins. And actually, his name is Didymus Thomas, right? And in different languages, Didymus means twins and Thomas means twins. So we get twin twins, which is so ridiculously Gemini. And that retrogrades me back to a week ago at this time where my storytelling transmission last Wednesday was about tales of twins, right? So thanks for that, Winter. Um, we get from... Pardon me if I'm pronouncing your amazing name incorrectly, but Odvorka, Odvorka, um, 800 degrees Fahrenheit on the hot side of Mercury, minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> and she says that's according to NASA. Um, whoa. What? <laughs> like 800 degrees F or minus 29 Fahrenheit. So, or, so that also relates to 430 degrees Celsius or minus 180 degrees Celsius. So quite a temperature differential, kind of sounds like Gemini, right? There's other things like Mercury is closest to the sun. That's called Mercury's perihelion from Earth's point of view, when in the sign of Gemini and furthest away when in the sign of Sagittarius. And uh, Sagittarius in the medieval tradition, anyway, is said to be the sign of Mercury's exile. You can go on and on like this. So anyway, this talk in Norwalk, I'm going to be doing things like this. But let me do, let me bring one more polyrhythm into you as, we're, as long as we're honoring the amazement of Mercury. Hermes. Mercury, Mercury. Mercury, 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 Mercury. Hermes, Hermes. Ah, I can't do it. <laughs> it's so hard. That's three over two. And by the way, if you speed that up to a point where it just sounds like buzzing, it becomes an interval we call the musical fifth. Twinkle, twinkle. A, B, C, D, E, F, there, <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little twinkle, twinkle, that's a fifth, right? 
that first time I tried was definitely not. <laughs> and that probably wasn't close enough to those of you who have good pitch the second or the third time as well. But what can I do? Um, I guess I could grab a flute. Yeah, let's let's pass on that. The, an amazing thing is that poly rhythm. This is three beats in the same span of time as these two. Polyrhythm and poly pitch are the same trip. <laughs> like it's just at different speeds. So you can take a musical fifth, like someone playing a C and somebody playing a G or playing those two notes on a piano, for example, which just sounds like, you know, an interval, two notes at the same time. And it's two vibrations against one another. If you slow that down, it turns into a poly pitch. It's crazy. Right. And so what about Mercury in three and two? So the two and one for Mercury is two Mercury years for each day. Right. And so if you're in one place on Mercury, like if you can handle it and you start a year at sunrise, that year ends at sunset. And your next year, therefore, your next orbit of the sun would be be a sunset to sunrise year. So you would have a day year and a night year. Gemini, <laughs> how amazing is that? Uh, mystical Rainbow Casey, what connects Mercury to Virgo in the way you describe the connection of duality of Gemini? Different things, wonderful question. Do we go there today? Hmm. Maybe not right now. Well, this, because like me trying to speak about these things, like three beats in the same span as two, like I can share with you about that in a Gemini way, but I can't do that until I practice it. And that practice like systems, I mean, even rhythm, I mean, rhythm like, you know, there's a lot of Capricorn in like the bass and the drums. Uh, there's a lot of Taurus in the way it moves your spine. Um, but Virgo would definitely be like the systems and the practices, you know? And like polyrhythms live in that realm too. So, I mean, I think we're even here also talking about Mercury and Virgo. I'm really glad you asked. There's There's more to it than that, but... Anyway, so what's the three and two on Mercury? Well, we already have the two. Right, so this is Mercury day and Mercury year. No, two years per day. <laughs> God, that's so hard. Even doing two and one is hard for me. Everyone do this. Okay, so one Mercury day, no, one Mercury year for two Mercury days. Okay, well then there's like another, um, there's another polyrhythm because the two and the three, it's like this, right? So two Mercury days is one Mercury year with respect to the sun. So that's like a tropical year, but a sidereal year, like the amount of time it takes from Mercury's point of view, the sun to align consecutively with a far away star. That's called the sidereal year. That has a, there's three of those for every two Mercury days. So there's the two to three. It might be two solar years per three sidereal years. And you know what? I should just reference. I'm looking around for it. I know there's a copy downstairs. I know there's a copy on a bookcase outside of the store where I keep my collection of the wonderful wooden books. You guys know about those little books? Like I'm saying, there's usually just at least a few right here because they're so great. Um, and there is one of them that might be the most interesting for star students like us called A Little Book of Coincidences in the Solar System. I want to just bring that up in my, in my world. A Little Book of Coincidence in the Solar System 
by John Martineau, who is the editor for the entire wooden book series, right? Little books that have way too much information in them and they just fry you, <laughs> right? So it's like one sentence at a time and then go breathe for a while, go walk in the woods if you read a paragraph or you won't make it through. Um, there's a few of those. I mean, I recommend all of them, frankly. But a few of them that I really recommend for the star student is a little book of coincidence in the solar system by John Martineau. That's where I learned about these polyrhythms that Mercury plays in like day to solar year and solar year to sidereal year. Um, another one is by the great Robin Heath. It's called Sun, Moon and Earth. Or Earth, Moon and Sun or some, you know. Let me just find out. Robin Heath, Sun, Moon, Earth. Robin Heath's got a great book called Sun, Moon, and Stonehenge. Yeah, Sun, Moon, and Earth is the little wooden book by Robin Heath. Mind-blowing, amazing, awesome. Another one that I really recommend by Jeff Stray, G-E-O-F-F, -F, Stray, um, is called The Mayan and other ancient calendars. As far as I'm concerned, those are like must haves for your shelves. The wooden book series, they also have a collection of uh, not four, but five of the wooden books devoted to the four sacred subjects of the sciences and the mystery traditions um, called the Quadrivium. And a little book of coincidence in the solar system is one of the five wooden books that's contained within that uh, Compilation. Highly recommended. You like books? Gemini loves books, <laughs> you know? So let's talk about that square that's just kind of inherent to Mercury. When we look at his homes, Gemini Air and Virgo Earth. All right. So for me, Virgo, when I look at like the Earth, Capricorn, the trunk and the roots of the thing. Taurus, the flowers and the fruits. They want to be smelled and tasted. It's so sensual and embodied and beautiful, you know. Um, but Virgo is the leaf. Virgo is the leaf that reaches for the light and does the inner work that feeds the thing. You know, we all got to photosynthesize. Gemini, <laughs> the winds of change that come to blow and rearrange, whether you want it or not, <laughs> you know, it's the trickster stuff. And really beautifully expressed by probably Mercury when in his backwards steps. Um, you know, and how does the leaf experience the wind? When I project my stories into that scenario, I'm actually watching it right now. I'm watching some leaves blown in the wind. They probably are less like, um, well, I don't know. It's a cloudy day right now, but they're still photosynthesizing, right? They're still light. So maybe, I was gonna say they might be less aggravated by the whole thing when it's a cloudy day like this. I don't think so. Probably at night though. Like a night breeze, it's like, cool, like, let's dance because at that time, well, maybe I'd like to rest because all day long I'm giving my body, I, I leaf, give my body to the light to feed the whole tree through photosynthesis, you know. And when the wind comes, like you're messing with me, like I, I need to give all my, my leaf, all my surface area to the flames, y'all, right? So like I feel that in that just inherent kind of Gemini Virgo square, which is therefore kind of part of the mercurial mystery. And in another way, I like to express this, like, interestingly, the only other planet who, from the traditional point of view, has homes that themselves are aligned in square is Jupiter, right? Sagittarius and Pisces. And these, of course, right, arrange for this interesting thing where a Mercury sign is opposite a Jupiter sign, Gemini, Sagittarius. Virgo and Pisces. The Mercury signs are square, Gemini and Virgo. The Jupiter signs are square, Sagittarius and Pisces, right? It's like this very interesting little riddle in the Zodiac, at least since the uh, since Hermes gave us the Thema Mundi. 
which first laid out the sign and planet relationship known as dispositorship. These days they use this word rulership. I hate it. Back in the day, they just would say that Mercury is the landlord of Gemini. You're the landlady of Virgo. <laughs> you know? And first of all, that's like so much more real and tangible. Like you and I have had landladies and landlords and sometimes it's cool. Usually when they're not up in our business and sometimes it's whack and the dog goes nuts. <laughs> Right on, Isabel. Good girl. Um, usually her barking's not too appreciated, but sometimes she's just right, right on cue. Yeah, you know, and your whole livelihood depends upon your landlord's thing. You know, you might be comfortable in your space. Um, and then suddenly they just sell, decide to sell it. <laughs> and they're like, hey, you need to clean up because we're showing the house tomorrow. It's like, what? He's like, what are you talking about? You know, I got to move, right? Like that whole trip, you know what I mean? And that's kind of like how the astrological system of dispositorship works. It's a very beautiful metaphor because it's something that we've had lived experience of. Um, and for me, like this astrology stuff, it better like work on earth, you know? Um, I'm just looking in another chat here and reading this cool thing. Please excuse me as I'm joining late, but have you already explained why this particular, particular Mercury retrograde will last longer in duration, but will travel less distance throughout? First of all, do I have that correct? Let's look together. What a cool thing. I actually haven't tuned into that yet personally. Um, there's a few places we can go. It's reminding me, by the way, to say something in a little bit. Okay, because um, I want to finish this trip about Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces, right? That the four signs that are designed to be the homes of Mercury and Jupiter are these signs that these days we call mutable, right? The mutable four. In the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School where I began my study, those mutable four are known as the service to spirit orientation. Um, I like to think of them as the spirit of the signs that like, I like to think of the um, Capricorn essence as like the other ship focus of the earth, Taurus, like the fixed uh, signs in general, fix myself to fix the world service to self-growth and then the mutable sign service to spirit or like the spiritual essence like gemini is just the spirit of the air pisces is the spirit of the water what is the spirit of the water like all water is connected it holds the memories of all that ever was like there is pythagoras p in this cup of tea yum um, but sadly, I got some Genghis Khan up in there too. <laughs> you know, it's like, it just holds everything that ever was, is, and probably will be, right? Like that's the spirit of the water and that's Pisces. So this idea of like spirit for these mutable signs, you know, they do it according to the element of their kind. And Gemini right? So like the spirit of the air, you know, that's like, well, I can just like learn the stories. I can like ask the right questions. I can find the right answers. I can read the right books, you know? Then you get to Virgo and it's like, no, you can't read about meditation, dude. Or you can read about playing three over two, but until you learn to do it and do it well, which I'm not quite there yet, like you're not like you're not doing it but you know like that idea of practice that kind of chop wood carry water can we can also get lost in that right we can like forget forget why we started chopping and carrying in the first place so i love that the coming eclipse has just a ton of pisces actually because in a way that's like the destination of course you're not going to get there without moving from virgo to sagittarius at least in the zodiacal order when we look at this square Right. And so Sagittarius, it's like, dude, why have I just been like, you know, like the story of the Buddha, right? He learned some truth 
Gemini that was hidden from him, like his father hid death from him. Do you know that tale? And then he just jumped the wall. He's like, I've been lied to. What? Anyone have that experience? And he split and he went to go quest, you know, and then he was renunciate for years, right? It said for four years, I think he starved himself and got down to like four kernels of rice per day. Many of you will know this tale better than I do. And at some point he's like, this isn't doing it. <laughs> like, like I, there's something else, right? And then he went into seeker mode. That's like that Sagittarius thing. Now we will never seek if we just believe. So seeking is not believing. I think that's so important. But when we seek and we find, then we find what I call faith. And faith, I don't think, is somebody else's like belief that you're just supposed to take on. As most would use that term, I mean faith being the things that you have learned through your own experience to be real, even though you can't see them, smell them, or share them to another senses. And, you know, then that kind of becomes your, your foundation, your belief, your mysticism or something. And you realize like, you had it all your, the whole time. <laughs> you know, like what you were looking for is right here because you are just, I don't know, part of the tea. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel into the mutable signs. There's so much more to say about that. And why am I even talking about mutable signs at this time? Well, interestingly, with the coming and very powerful total solar eclipse in the sign of Aries, obviously a cardinal sign, right? We have uh, many planets in the sign of Pisces. As I'm transmitting this today on April 3rd, 2024, if you're into that whole Gregorian trip, Venus is conjunct Neptune in Pisces, very near her exalted degree which is the 28th degree of Pisces. That means 27 plus. Um, Saturn is in Pisces. And as you know, has been not nearly as long as Neptune. And they will kind of jump the wall into Aries at the same time. That will be a trip for us to journey into in the future time. Mars is also in Pisces now. And with the coming total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024, on Moon Day, um, so here in uh, Pacific time, it's like 11.20 a.m. on Monday, the day of the moon. I swear I just saw a chart where it was earlier in the day. But, you know, the truth is that's looking with parallax, which we really need to consider when we're talking about things with the moon from a local surface of the Earth point of view. But I'm not going to go there today either. Anyway, at the time of the eclipse in the sign of Aries, right, Mars is home. We look to Mars, who's in Pisces, conjunct Saturn at that time. Venus will have jumped the wall. She's doing that quite soon and will be in Aries. She's leaving the sign where she's said to be an honored guest, Pisces, and into Aries, where she's said actually to be in exile. Um, and I could go on and on about that eclipse, but I'm not going to today. We don't have time. I want to instead take our remaining time here to pursue this thread introduced um, in this wonderful question by light paint please excuse me as i am joining late you are excused please excuse me as i am joining early um but you have already explained why this particular have you already explained why this particular mercury particular mercury retrograde will last longer in duration but will travel less distance throughout. Do I have that correct? Intriguing. <laughs> Let's explore that. And a place we can is uh, AstroSeek. You asked that question at Instagram. I would advise you to head over to my YouTube page because we're going to go to AstroSeek, the amazing free space online, thanks to the great Peter, where we have some cool tools we can use to explore uh, some of these questions that you posed about this particular mercury retrogrades duration and um longitude arc i guess i'd call it i don't know i appreciate also that um that your question at least me trying to read it made me slow down um I'm reading here, your voice is going into funny fluctuations. Well, that's appropriate for the signs of the time. I'm not sure if everybody else is having that. So for those of you at Instagram, in the my link, my bio, there's a link, GeminiBrett.com slash links. 
and that will take you over to my YouTube page. So you want to be there for this because we'll look at charts and like full screen and, and I can go there like a little bit longer than an hour anyway. Hey, Leah, really good to see you. Okay. So yeah, before we go there, let me just share another thing that you'll find at that GeminiBrett.com slash links or at GeminiBrett.com, which where it will direct you to constellations. Let me share an image on the screen, actually. Let's do, I'm going to type in GeminiBrett.com slash links. And then let me see if I can get this in a place where I can put it on your screen. Something like this and this and one of these. And yeah, like that, I think you'll be looking at this image here. So by the way, thanks to Carolyn Link, who has been helping me out here at the School of Astrology immensely in recent weeks, I guess months now. She's re like really helped me launch a lot of this stuff and get it together a bit, which is super helpful, especially at this time, because Anna and I are having a baby and friends, I got to get my shit together. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's very helpful to have some help to organize things because, you know, I'm missing the Capricorn bits in my chart and Carolyn Link is certainly not. And I love that her last name is Link because she set up, for example, this link tree, as they call it for me, which is cool. So this is at GeminiBrett.com slash links. You can go to my website from there. You can go to the School of Astrology. You can book a session, upcoming events. The YouTube live stream, some of you are there already. By the way, if you are here, especially if you just happened along this place, please give the video a like and please subscribe to the channel. Like, help me a ton. I'm live every Wednesday. I'm committed to this for the year at 11, 11 p.m. Pacific time. And most, for the most part, I'll be able to go live in very mercurial fashion in three places at once, which is YouTube, my uh, Gemini Brett um, Facebook page, and also at Instagram. Um, but the YouTube space, like, first of all, like, I don't know, I'll probably make a business move given that I am having a baby in June where I will actually get a little bit of kickback when you watch these things there. Uh, and it's just a place where, I don't know, it's easier for me to check in with comments and other things. So that's the place I'd encourage you to do it. By the way, at, at GeminiBread.com slash links, you'll see you can also put your name in here to um, join the mailing list. I hope you will. If you're on it, you got an email from me this morning about Constellations community. So let's go there now. And you will read, you are not alone, right? So this is just so important. I want to speak about like why I've started this thing and why I'm doing it now. When you're over at this place and you can get there directly through GeminiBrett.com slash Constellations as well. Um. You'll see this, this long video there. It's eight minutes long. I'm going to replace that at some point, though. But I, I, I might get into like a little bit of TMI about me in the coming Aries solar eclipse. But you know what, Aries, we should be sharing about the self a bit. And I speak about how that literally like that activation coming my way, like I can see it in changes in my relationship. My beloved Scorpiana is pregnant and we're actually doing some deep shadow work right now to find some new light to, you know, prepare to be an even stronger family once baby's here. You know, the eclipse is in my 11th house, which is actually the fifth of the seventh. So it's my partner's child, right? Like I've been in Koa's life since he was three, but he's not my kid. He's on his kid. And that is not the fifth house. That's the 11th house, the fifth of the seventh, right? And so the eclipse is in my 11th. The 11th is also communities, right? And it's right on my Jupiter, who's the planet that uh, governs the seventh house in my Gemini rising chart. So partner and also governs the 10th. So work, you see? And in this case, starting a new community in my workspace, which is the School of Astrology. So hence School of Astrology Constellations. Um, I want to read you a little bit about what I wrote this morning. We started a little bit poetically. 
and maybe just show you about um, the classes that I'll be teaching exclusively to constellations this year. These are actually proposed topics, all aligned to the signs of the time. But, you know, I want to be able to go with the flow and also just respond to community suggestions. So let me just read this thing to you. It goes like this. There's nothing like a sky full of stars. Each of the celestial lights hums a unique and beautiful tone. And when these notes and the spaces between come together in relation, we hear the songs of constellations. These starry songs have stories to tell. Their relationships help us travel into hidden realms, but the greatest mysteries are revealed when we widen our gaze to find all constellations connecting to fill the entire sky. Each of their melodies, it would seem, are part of one celestial symphony composed to celebrate the marriage of heaven above and earth below. Okay, perhaps that thing just got too poetic and way too far out. <laughs> what I'm here to tell you about is Constellations, the School of Earth Astrology's new membership group, which is designed to help you connect your light with other stars of like heart and mind. This amazing space will be filled with, filled with so many constellations to explore. If you're just starting to read charts like many of my friends are, you'll be able to gain invaluable experience at the Readings Exchange Circle in Constellations. Perhaps you love the cards. There will be a tarot astro correspondence circle in Constellation led by a trusted guide. Another trusted guide will be leading an embodiment of the astrological archetype circle, breath work, you know, movement, motion to explore Aries and Taurus and the like. I think you'll love that one. I'm really excited by um, a research group I know Carolyn Link is going to lead, which is work on the prenatal eclipse chart. I say research, that sounds like all mind. Of course, the art of the chart starts in the heart. And Caroline will bring bringing us there too. Carolyn, maybe Caroline, is that you? Come on in, <laughs> all right? So I'll just say right now, like I'm offering a limited time price, um, probably until solstice, we will see where you can access constellations for only 16 bucks a month or 160 for the year, like a 12 for 10 kind of trip. That's a six for five. I, I can't do that, <laughs> but I'll learn how to six and five one of these days. Um, if you join now, and here's a little trickster move. We did have Mercury station retrograde on April Fool's Day after all. If you join now and join the soul family and join these many, many circles, um, you can access the first of these 12 classes that I'll be teaching. Typically, they'll be like two or three hours and probably like first Saturdays of the month, um, including this first Saturday of April coming up April 6th. But this weekend, we're going to do a double class series. Saturday and Sunday. They will run from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific. If you're on my list, I've been telling you to save the date for a while. This will be exclusive to the Constellations community. I was going to just sell this Eclipse and Eclipse Cycles Masterclass in Deep Dive Chart Intensive, Live Chart Intensive for like 108 bucks, but you can literally get it for 16 if you pull a little retrograde move of like signing up and then leaving <laughs> before you're charged again in a month. I shouldn't like advertise that, but my feeling is that once you come in, you're going to really dig it. And um, I can't wait to really share this space with amazing souls like you, you know, like the, the starry study can be really isolating and lonely. We're into some weird shit, you know, and we start having this a weirdening where we're not the same as our old friends. And, you know, I think the hermetic part of the quest, like where you're just alone in your own magician's tower, is kind of an essential part of the trip. But it's not meant to be forever. It's a phase. Fellowship, coming together in tribe, in soul family is also so necessarily. So necessarily necessary. Imperative. When I was... um leading the golden year of earth astrology. We had these amazing community discussion groups who were watching movies together, analyzing them from the astrological archetypal point of view. We were doing all sorts of things, really holding space for one another when moving through times of like deep 
initiation of loss, but also gain of pleasure and pain, you know, and I've been missing that. So this is another kind of like retrograde thing for me to like go back and recreate this community space and do it in such a way where like, I'm not like just some leader of the team. I mean, I will be teaching a class every month. I will be personally like hosting a community discussion group, but the intent there is also for me not to be the one like holding the talking stick the whole time, you know, and I'm getting hopefully better and better about inspiring others to share their wisdom. Like I want to learn from you, but we will literally have these different circles within constellations that are led by other folks, you know, other teachers. And I won't get to be able to make it all you want either. <laughs> you know, you're going to get to pick and choose what you dig. Um, so anyway, I hope you'll come in and, and give it a chart. Um, the Real Not Brody asks, is it cool to start with monthly, then switch to the yearly? Absolutely. Um, however, what I would do, the Real Not Brody, is like message me or just rap with me in circles or with Carolyn Link at that time when you're about to make the switch. Cause I think we'll have to like set up some kind of coupon code or I don't know, you know, if frankly, we'll probably just kind of send out like monthly offers of doing that or something. Cause we just have to dance with the ones and the O's and the, in the, in the magical computer box. <laughs> that I like, get so hard, so hard to deal with. You know what I mean? Reading from Moni Hampton. Congrats on the baby. Oh, thank you so much. Reading from Nadine, 1111 AM, which makes me feel like I probably said I'll be live every Wednesday at 1111 PM. And that's not true. 1111 AM Pacific time every Wednesday. I'm committed to that for the year, like the astrological year. Um, even once the baby comes, even when we're traveling and such. So we'll see how much I can keep that dream. I think I will. Um, and that stuff's all free. That's going to be here at the YouTube page or at these three places, wherever you're watching. Um, but the deeper dives, you know, will, are going to happen in Constellations. So I, I hope you'll consider joining me there, kicking the tires a bit. Well, there's no tires on a spaceship. Come on. Um, and just seeing how it is, you know. And again, uh, Linda, I see you just subscribed. Thank you so much. I should put this link down there in the um, chat, I guess. Maybe that'll work. <clears throat> the link actually I prefer is this so-called pretty link. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning so much about computers. It's funny how much like I'm learning about things I didn't really sign up for in you know, becoming an astrologer. Um, anyway, let me post this here as well. So if anyone wants to go check it out, join up. It's awesome. I already, I was just reading names of folks that are in it now. It's like all-star team of super awesome soul beings. Like we're going to create really cool things there. And I just reached out to a bunch of trusted guides, like somebody to lead like a astral art group and whatnot. Okay. So, Hey, I've just kind of reached my, um, time limit here at Instagram. And so I'm going to sign off there. But again, I'll just remind you that you can go to my bio and there's a link that will bring you over to my links page and you can click the YouTube live streams there if you want to keep going with us. Because I want to like pursue those questions that were posed about isn't this Mercury transit, this, this particular Mercury retrograde, I think it was longer in duration, but shorter in arc, maybe. Now, let me just answer the question, <laughs> first and foremost, because I do have another minute in Instagram. This will have to do with the, the elliptical nature of orbits, and Mercury's orbital path is the most eccentric, or the least circular, the most elliptical, until you get out to Pluto. Well, that's not quite true. Asteroids, centaurs like Chiron, they'll have even a more eccentric or elliptical thing than Mercury. But for the planets, like the visible planets, Mercury is the most elliptical, the most eccentric, which just makes sense. Fucking Mercury is eccentric, right? And because Mercury is at sometimes much closer to the sun, Mercury is actually moving faster um, at those times. And he'll cover more distance in less time. Or there's times when Mercury's further from the sun 
so that that's like the answer but let's go look at that together all right so signing off at instagram come on over to the youtube space geminibrett.com slash links all right cool i think we're alone now i'm gonna catch up with the chat over here if i can nadine for your information i did not get an email this morning bummer yeah, you know, it's just, it's hard to keep things out of people's like spam boxes and stuff. Um, and usually, Nadine, I know you do get my email, so that's interesting. But if you would, please check out like your spam and your like promotions folders, like those things that our internets do now to protect us from nonsense, like emails from Gemini Bread <laughs> or otherwise. Hey, cool. We just got a little confirmation of uh, from Amala Hall that she would be honored and interested in leading an astro herbalism circle within constellations. Yes. Uh, and by the way, it sounds like I don't want to name names yet because I got to kind of confirm things, but that we will have a wonderful Den Mama leaving, leading kind of breathwork and embodiment circle. Um, and another leading a dream group circle within constellations. Like it's going to be super cool. And I wish I could do like all of it in that world and I won't, but I think that's really important. You know, like I want this to be a community and a community that only has one voice is not a community. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I need to very kind of purposefully not be there for many of the things. Um, but I know they will all be awesome because we are going to have very powerful and trusted guides leading the way. All right. So let's check out Astro Seek. Do, 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 do. Buttons, buttons, buttons. Let me actually just first check in with when my student is that I know I have later on today. Okay. Set timer for 27 minutes. I'm going to have to take that thing seriously when it rings. <laughs> okay. I uh, probably should actually do 23 minutes because I want to do a little prep time over there. All right. So let me open do, do, do this. Okay. So Buttons, 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 buttons. Hopefully you're seeing this constellations thing on your screen. You are. Oh, I should share also. Maybe I should just share quickly what the membership page looks like. Um, yeah, let me queue it up and then show you. There's not much there yet, but there will be much soon. Um, so pushing buttons, finding out things. Oh, like a few of you just joined. Awesome. I am so, so stoked to explore with you. Cool. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for supporting my work for fueling the spaceship at this time where, oh my God, I need it because we're having a baby. I'm excited and nervous. Okay, I'm pushing the right buttons, I believe, to get to this place. Okay, cool, yeah. So, buttons, buttons, buttons. This one, this one is, okay, cool. So this is currently what, like, once you um, join this journey at the first Voyager's price of only $16 a month, um, Earth Astrology Constellations, which you can find at GeminiBrett.com slash constellations. Read all about it. Okay. Um, yeah, once you're in, you'll get to this page. There's like a little welcome thing. Down at the bottom is a place to introduce yourself. Please do that. Please, please, please. You'll have your links here for joining the Eclipse and Eclipse Cycles Masterclass, which is, again, this Saturday, April 6th, and Sunday, April 7th. 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific. These links will get you right into the Zoom. It's not a webinar, it's a meeting because after like I share and actually during, we're really gonna get into chart intensive, especially the second days. You'll see there's a form here to submit if you are willing to share your chart and willing to speak about it real time 
you know, with consent, certainly not going into any places that you don't want to share publicly and also knowing that it will be recorded, right? Because if you can't make these things or any of the classes live, these things will be posted to the membership page and accessible for the year or as long as your membership's active, okay? So you're not going to be able to make all this stuff live. There are some things we certainly will not record, like some just open heart sharing circles. You want to keep safe space for that, right? And the record button does not allow for this. So some things will only happen live, but there'll be a lot of stuff like embodiment practices, astro herbalism, some of those things are already expressed, like that are completely recorded. The classes I teach this year, community discussion, Q&A stuff, like for sure, right? All that accessible, because I know we all live in different time zones. And by the way, like part of the idea of circles is if you live in Australia, Right, you're in a very kind of different time than experience than I am as far as the spinning earth goes, right? Like we get community discussion groups devoted to like that astro kind of Asia time zone realm, which would just be much easier for your own timeline, right? Just remembering this experience, by the way, this is Jupiter just re-emerging from occultation by the moon. It's a photo I took up the road some months and months ago. Okay, anyway, um, another thing I just want to show you here at Constellations is I am doing a very unique kind of Deccan walk. Um, you know, the Deccans, perhaps you know of them, the 36 faces or 10 degree divisions of the Zodiac, like they each have a planetary association. Since the time of the Golden Dawn, they actually have associated to row cards like that's a wonderful thing to explore there's many different images that have been associated with the decans or the faces the 10 degree divisions for a long time but the original decan tradition was about working with the stars and that's my intent here i'm going to put up videos devoted to every like journey of the sun through these 10 degree divisions and i'm not going to be talking about the stars the sun's aligned to like you can't see those <laughs> you'll go blind i'm going to be working with the stars on the squares because the sun sets and there they are, and you can just be with them all night, or before the sun rises, there they are. Yeah. And so you'll just get to learn to see the zodiac in the space, in the space with your face, um, with these backyard astronomy videos that are super cool and fun. We'll actually get to track on my own horizon calendar, the journey of the sun. So here's the sun at equinox time. And uh, here is the sun. 10 degrees later, check it out. <laughs> like this, here's, here's the sun moving into the second face of Aries. That bump right there, the left side of that bump, the south side of that bump, that's equinox. 10 degrees later, we're all the way over here. Let me go back to equinox and you'll see. Can't see the bump anymore, right? Because of the sun. By the time the sun gets to like the Tropic of Cancer, there between these, I call them the eucalyptus goalposts. Sagittarius Capricorn sun over here on Solstice Hill, right? So you just really get to see this kind of expression of my own personal horophony, right? This is kind of my sacred zone of tracking these cycles. All right, so speaking of, let's go to this amazing place, AstroSeek. Hopefully you know about it, astro-seek.com. And one of the, they, they offer so much. So let's go Astro Tools. Is it various search engine, planetary cycles? No, I think various graphic tools. We want something that looks like this, planetary cycles, tendency of the signs. Yeah, let's do that. And so let's go planet Mercury in the calendar year of 2024, if you're into that whole Gregorian trip. And let's just generate a chart. What happened here? A Mercury cycle over 0.9 years. Interesting. So this instead really did 2023. And I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe because it's retrograde time. Um, so I guess put in 2025. Yeah, there you go. So March of 2024 to March of 2025. Notice how much time Mercury spends in the fire signs in Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. 
I first learned about this truth from Daniel Jamario, my first teacher, then at the um, Shamanic Astrology Mystery School. Daniel's school now is the Turning of the Ages Mystery School. He and I has honored me to invite me to uh, record one of their curriculum courses with him that we're actually in the process of recording and have been. It's like a, kind of another wonderful retrograde experience that I'm having right now. Um, where we're recording a cosmology class, astronomy cosmology class for his school, the Turning of the Ages Mystery School together. So anyway, I first learned from Daniel about the Mercury elemental year, that Mercury cycles will be devoted to the same element each year. Really, it's either four or six cycles in the same element, typically. Uh, the great Gary Caton, who I met through Daniel and through the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School, has taken this work even further. It's actually one of the classes I will be teaching for the Constellations community this year, later with another Mercury loop, uh, which is better ways to play with Mercury retrograde. I just want to give like a little punchline to those many jokes now. They're not jokes at all, but um, Mercury retrograde means Mercury is close to Earth. Let's say you are Earth, my face is the sun, and this is Mercury. That's Mercury retrograde. This is Mercury direct. <laughs> um, and so Mercury is now closest to us. And I was taught that when Santa comes by to bring offerings and to bring a wish list, and that's how I encourage you to play with Mercury retrograde. I'll be speaking about that with like deeper kind of ritualistic practices coming up. But for now, I'll just say on, on um, May 11th and 12th, it's like Mother's Day, when Mercury is between us in the sun, um, I highly advise, usually, I, well, I start this practice earlier and that's what I'll be teaching in that class, but I highly advise that you get out and um, Look to the sun, knowing that Mercury is between you and the light. Let me get this date up of Mercury's Kazemi. So Mercury conjunct sun. So I said May 11th, 12th, 12th, sorry, and Mother's Day. I'm on, I'm on the future, <laughs> right? April 11th, Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific, Mercury retrograde conjunct sun, which goes sun, Mercury, Earth. Right. And so I, I like to get outside and like get with the light and, you know, not stare at the sun. You'll go blind. But like I'll go out and close my eyes and I'll kind of like wiggle my eyelids to get some kind of light show going, as you know, and the sparkles happen. And sometimes I'll literally see constellations and those shiny stars or like I start to get like symbols or visions, you know, but I go with no expectations, by the way. And oftentimes I will bring an offering. It might, by the way, be like, I will fast while you're retrograde. Uh, I will not do this or I will do this. Like, you know, some kind of offering. Uh, and typically I'll bring something out to the, the temple of the sky as I go engage with Mercury in this way during the day when Mercury is between us and the light. And so, again, this is April 11th, 4 p.m. ish Pacific time. 4.03. Oh, um, that's fun because today's 4-3 if you're into that Gregorian trip. Okay, then I'll turn my back to the sun and look to my shadow. And now it's sun, Mercury, me, my shadow, earth, everybody, you know? So how can I now get this message from the light to travel my shadow into the center of the earth where we all connect you know, like, how can I serve? How can I help? And I just ask for, I ask for that message. And then who knows? Like, I might hear a song that I know. I might, um, I might um, receive something in a dream, like three days later. And, you know, the day before, the day after, like, typically it's kind of like three days for Mercury. We can really tune into Mercury between us and the sun. All right, let me check this timer thing. Cool. Let's just go to the charts here and see if we can explore that question that was posed about the duration of this particular loop. Let's just compare a few. So I'm going to go back to the, to the Mercury loop before this one. So here's December 12th. 
2023 if you're into that whole Gregorian trip. And Mercury stations retrograde at eight and a half degrees Capricorn, right? So December 12th, eight and a half degrees Capricorn and Mercury direct on January 1st. Okay, so at 22 degrees. So eight and a half Capricorn, let's call this 22 and a half Sagittarius to make our math easier. He went 16 degrees. Okay, let's see where Mercury can join the sun in between. And the answer is right at one Capricorn. So basically in the midpoint of that place, eight and a half degrees Capricorn, where he had stationed retrograde on um, December 12th. And this is all going to be like Pacific time, okay? Pacific dates. Um, eight and a half Capricorn. He comes from there between Earth and the sun the, uh, on solstice. And then stations direct like eight and a half degrees on the other side here at 22. I'm going to call it 22 and a half Capricorn. Okay. And January 1st, right? So from December 12th to January 1st with 31 days in December, we're talking about what? 18, 19 days. Okay. 19 days and like eight, 16 degrees. Okay, well, let's look at the next one. That's the one coming now. Mercury station retrograde on April Fool's Day at 27 Aries. So April 1st, conjoining the sun on April 11th, 10 days later at 22 and a half, and then going direct on April 25th, at 15, really 16 Aries. So let's just look at the retrograde, 27 Aries, and then direct at 16 Aries. Now it's like 16 and a quarter, or sorry, 16. So that's adding 14 degrees. No, between 16 and 27, we're talking about 11 degrees. Right. So this one, obviously, much less than the previous one where the travel was 16 degrees. And here, April 1st and station direct on April 25th. So this is what we heard in that question that was posed, which is really cool. Right. So like it's not going as far and it's taking much longer to do so. OK, so it's just it, the reason is this. I'll have to like spend a lot more time pursuing and it sounds like somebody else has <laughs> so if you would please just share a link um pursuing like how this particular cycle relates to others but i think what you'll see is if you go forward like seven years and especially if you go forward like uh well 20 years is one of the hellenistic numbers for mercury 46 is a really good synodic time for mercury 33 years as well uh, 79 would be the most precise that you're going to find a very similar thing but basically if this thing's moving at a consistent speed it's going to take like much shorter to cross longer to cross your screen there than it would be if he's doing it from back here Okay, so some, like this was very much exaggerated, but you get the point, right? I'm trying to move the cup at a consistent speed, like from back there and up here, like he's covering like the same amount of space that's like zodiac degrees or celestial longitude at a different pace based on proximity to the earth. Okay, so that's like has to do with Mercury's aphelion, perihelion. I'm actually going to Astro Gold will let me check. Oh, in this coming Mercury Kazemi. So on April 11th. Oh, let me get to the nodes and apsides list. That at the time, Mercury is like 0.6 uh, AUs from the Earth, AU being an astronomical unit, that's the average distance between Earth and Sun. That Mercury's minimum distance is 0.55 AU, and at this time he'll be 0.58, so very close to his minimum distance to the Earth. 
where the maximum distance is 1.45. Now, it's kind of like, you know, that maximum distance is going to be Mercury behind the sun, right? So we'd have to really compare, like, when Mercury's between Earth and the sun, in one sign, like Aries, to the next, like Leo will be the next Mercury retrograde. Like, how close is Mercury to the Earth? But when Mercury's super close to the Earth, he's going to be able to cover the same amount of distance in less time. Okay, but now the distance is different. Why? And this is going to have to do with Mercury's distance to the sun. So that's Mercury's particular orbital speed and also Earth's distance to the sun, which, by the way, we're like very much currently at average distance to the sun because Earth is closest to the sun in January and furthest in July. And that closest means faster sun and the further means slower sun, like in our zodiac because it means faster earth and slower earth, right? These are the things that are going to contribute to the to how the light is painted. <laughs> so to answer your question, light paint 77, um, that. So that's like the why. A cooler question, right, is like the when, right? So when is Mercury's fastest, longest, or however the things combine. And then the even cooler question is, what the fuck? Well, sorry, what in the heavens happens <laughs> when, when a Mercury retrograde is particularly long in duration, but short in distance versus long in duration or short in duration, but long in distance versus average or whatever? Um. Awesome questions. I mean, you can tell that like, I don't know so much, like I'm tripping on it. And so this is why I love community. There's so many res reasons why I love community, right? But like, and I always say this in any q and I do, I mean, I, I say this to all my students as well, for those who like engage in personal mentorship with me. I promise to answer any question as long as you promise to question my answers, <laughs> right? And then, you know, somebody else is going to have a different answer. It's like, oh, yeah. And it's just like the different questions, like the different questions are just such fuel for the ship. <laughs> so right on, like light paint 77, love your name. Not sure if we've met yet, but I really appreciate you asking that question and in that way. And not sure if my response at least the astronomy that I'm seeing to describe this thing is correct. Um, but I believe it is. I believe it is. And that's that's everything I've got for today because I'm actually off to a teaching session right now. Okay, last time I'll say this. I'm not trying to make this like a sales thing. I want to record some of that bit into just a short like one minute video with some pretty pictures that I can share every week because <laughs> I'm really excited to kind of devote a lot of my time, space and space time two constellations right now. I really want to get that thing going. And mostly like I'm excited to build team of like guides and participants, like participant guides and guide participants <laughs> um, to just get it going. You know, I think we can get involved in these things and just be overwhelmed and just feel like we can't keep up and then we're just out. And I definitely don't want it to be a place where you just feel marketed to all the time. Like it, that makes me like, cringe um but at the same time i need to like promote my work in a better way i'm not good at it and i got a baby coming <laughs> do you know what i'm saying i did you know why why not i just put put this in the link right now too and anyone who did actually get the email if you're on my list that i sent this morning you would have also not only received um, an invitation to constellations so let me type that in here again. Yeah. So in the chat, by the way, if you're on YouTube in the descriptions of this particular video, you'll find that link. Some of you are too busy in your community realms or don't want to get involved or whatever, but a few of you actually now more than a few have asked me if Anna and I, um, have a baby registry because as we know, it takes a village and I really, really appreciate you asking. Um, and so why don't I just post that link here just in case? 
I'm trying to grab it, <laughs> but the internet won't let me. Should I blame that on my great guide? I don't think so. Let me just click that page. And I'll stick that here in the live stream comments as well, and then try to remember to post it in the YouTube comments on the other side. Uh, and thanks for that. Congrats, Yoda. Been a big fan of you for decades, Yoda. Thank you so much for your great teachings. Um, all right. You know, it's funny. It's like the link is so dang long. <laughs> I got to delete that because <laughs> it took up two comments. And then it won't work. Let me um, just quickly perform my new internet kung fu uh, by making a pretty link, we'll call it. How do we do this thing again? How do I make a new one? I'll just replace one. Uh, this is boring TV, I understand that, friends. Um, baby, baby registry, baby, and then we do this update. Let's see if it works. It does. Awesome. So what I'm going to post here in the comments is GeminiBrett.com slash baby. <laughs> we have a baby coming. Um, and yeah, if you want to contribute whatever to that thing, do it. Any help would be so graciously received with absolutely zero expectations. The present of your presence is the greatest gift. It supports my work so much. By the way, especially if you just like give a like to this video, subscribe to the channel, like those things really help. They all, you know, not, not only like help us battle the algorithm, which is something we're up against here, especially those of us who have shared our minds during particularly sensitive times like 2001 and 2020. Um, but also, you know, it helps like, comfort the heart of my sensitive soul <laughs> and so that he appreciates it thanks so much everyone for being here for your support for loving the sky for going there and i hope to see you in the constellation space which by the way we'll have our first gathering this saturday and sunday in the eclipse and eclipse cycles deep dive chart intensive jen writes what a great teacher father student of life uh, thanks for that we'll see <laughs> we should we shall see not every day but i'm trying and i'm growing and i get by with a little help from my friends so thank you all for that see you in space